It's hard to believe, but the idea that smoking and lung cancer were in any way connected used to be preposterous, something that got you laughed out of a room. Siddhartha Mukherjee describes this in his book The Emperor of All Maladies, a biography of cancer. Doctors would argue that smoking was so commonplace you could find a similar connection between cancer and the consumption of milk. At one point, a doctor fresh out of medical school goes to assist a more experienced one in a surgery and is shocked at the poor state of the patient's lungs. Meanwhile, the more seasoned of the two hadn't noticed anything out of the ordinary at all. He had seen so many blackened, shriveled lungs that these were his new normal. Why I bring this up in a video about cute anime witches is because it took an outsider to notice that something didn't quite add up. The veteran doctor was so mired in the way things had been done that he was blind to the issues that came with doing so. Likewise, the folks at Luna Nova are well-meaning, but trapped within their own dated thinking. It takes Akko, someone completely separated from the world of magic, to finally knock some sense into them. Throughout the series, just the mere exposure of Akko to some old-timey tradition was enough to expose its faults and flip it on its head. Funnily enough, and I acknowledge that I'm just weird, I find a lot of parallels between Little Witch Academia and Things Fall Apart by Chinua Achebe, may he rest in peace. They both deal with themes of tradition and change, but while things fall apart and stay apart in Achebe's story, Akko is able to save magic from the brink of destruction through the only way she knows how, being herself. Luna Nova's culture of being averse to the change reveals itself fairly early on in the series, and only continues to snowball from there. In the second episode, Diana's first reaction to seeing the chrysalis of the Papaliodia is to kill it with fire. That's an overreaction if I've ever seen one. It's the first moment where we see that Diana isn't entirely the perfect what she initially comes across as, and this highlights Akko's importance. Because although Diana's magical knowledge and ability are off the charts, almost impossibly so, she is still a product of her environment to an extent. She's been a witch mostly her whole life, and doesn't have the benefit Akko does of being on the outside looking in. Diana feels slighted towards the end that the shiny rod didn't choose her, but what's important to note is that it could have never been her, something that she accepts and realizes eventually. Although the two do kind of end up sharing, which is nice. This acceptance is what sets her apart from the main character of Things Fall Apart. The novel focuses on Okonkwo, as his African village undergoes some pretty drastic changes due to the appearance of European missionaries. Things Fall Apart is set at a precipice between tradition and change as the Igbo have to choose which of the two they value over the other. Okonkwo chooses to resist, and suffers a pretty depressing death as a result. However, it's important to note that it wasn't the act of resisting that leads to his eventual fate. It's the fact that he opposes change for the wrong reasons, and that he's unable to adapt his way of life to face the challenge. It's easy to paint with a broad brush and call the missionaries evil, but the fact that their offer seems so inviting elucidates flaws within their own traditional systems. Okonkwo fails to realize that something may be wrong, and lashes out instead of doing some self-reflecting. A lot of this also happens in Little Witch Academia. The most egregious example I can think of is the constant sacrifices to Vaharios. The reason they offer is incredibly weak, and it basically amounts to, that's how it's always been done. No way in hell does Akko accept that as a valid excuse, and sets off doing what she thinks is right. And of course, she is right. She cures the underlying issue rather than simply managing the symptoms, and she's able to do so because she recognizes the absurdity, having the unique perspective of someone not well versed in the world of magic. Much of this also applies to Shining Chariot and Croy, and over their long tenure at Luna Nova, they end up losing their way. In their blind campaign to bring magic to its former glory, they forget their roots and what made magic, well, magical in the first place. In a way, the different methods that Croy and Chariot go through betray a fundamental distrust in magic. Why else go through all the gimmicks to try to bring it back? It's why Akko is so successful. She has faith in both herself as a witch and magic as a benevolent force. Think about what the seven words of Arcturus even are. They basically stand for, in order, ambition, hard work, self-reliance, patience, adaptation, gratefulness, and community. These concepts aren't hard to grasp and quite frankly are kind of obvious, but their simpleness is what makes them easily taken for granted, and both Croy and Chariot inadvertently toss them aside in their mad search for something new. What Little Witch Academia tries to teach are some concepts I think we should all take to heart. It shows how easy it is to be trapped in groupthink and tradition, and how a fresh perspective may be the answer to all of your troubles. Especially if she's as rambunctious and kind-hearted as Akko is. Sadly, Things Fall Apart shows us what happens when one is averse to change. And happily with the existence of Akko, Little Witch Academia is able to go in a different direction. It also puts a new spin on an old cliché. Because while a major theme of the show is believing in yourself, Akko ultimately succeeds because she believes in the power of magic as well. It's the reason she's at Luna Nova in the first place. 
And not only does the show focus on belief, the message is that it's important to question those beliefs from time to time as well, lest you fall into the same trap Croy and Chariot do. I think that we would all do well to remember the seven words of Arcturus and apply them in our own lives, as well as remember the journey of someone truly bewitching. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe for more content. And of course, if anything I said was wrong, I'm sorry. I must have stuttered.